Good morning, everybody. Monday morning quarterback, episode 132. I hope you guys have all had a good start to your week. <clears throat> Today, we're gonna talk about how to correctly measure your shocks and how to know you have the right length shocks for your application. So um, before we jump into that, I wanna answer a question that was asked after we signed off last week, and I thought it was a very good question. I've already responded to the person who asked it. But uh, that question was, um, last week we were talking about shock valvings and the traditional, old traditional way of valving numbers and then how we give you the actual raw data now um, because that's a true unit to measure that <clears throat> is uh, worked across multiple platforms. But the, um, the question I wanted to, to reiterate that the guy asked after we signed off was, what should a driver feel? Should a driver feel 10 pounds? And what I explained to him and I'd, I'd like to elaborate on here is, um, I like to look at it more as a percentage change than a poundage change because certainly most drivers are going to feel if a shock went from 20 pounds to 30, but if a shock went from 200 to 210, um, they're probably not going to feel that. So typically a 20 to 25% change most drivers should feel. Um, your, your more particular or, or finicky drivers, they might feel a 15% change. Um, so that, that's how I would like to look at it. Um, so if you have your dyno sheets laid out after we talked last week and you're like, man, I got a right front that's 87 and I got a right front that's 83. Um, I don't really feel like that's a big enough difference that somebody's gonna have an issue or, or feel, uh, feel a difference. Now, when we're building shocks here, we're trying to um, build them as absolutely as close as possible and we certainly build them closer than 20% when we're um, matching like shocks, but um, but that's that's about the change that, that a driver should feel. So if you're looking at making just a little minor 5% rebound change as the track slicks off, you're probably wasting your time. The driver's not going to feel it. The car's not going to react to that. Um, so as we jump into today's topic, which is correctly measuring shocks, um, I have my phone here so I can see your comments and can answer your questions. Um, so don't hesitate to ask a question. If it doesn't pertain to today's topic, that's okay. We'll still answer it. And um, I'll do my spiel here and then I'll come back and answer questions. So today we want to talk about, and we get this question a lot on how to correctly measure a shock. So um, this is a RS-17 small body monotube. And so when we say that this is a six inch shock, which I'm guessing this is actually a five, um, what we're actually doing is we're measuring um, five inches of available stroke, okay? And so a five inch gas shock is gonna have a longer fully extended um, center line of eye to center line of eye. It's gonna have a longer um, overall extended than a twin tube because a twin tube, the body's shorter. We don't have this big gas chamber. So the body's um, three quarters of an inch or so shorter on a twin tube, but it would still measure a five inch stroke. Um, this is a six or uh, seven inch um, but you can see the body shorter, right? Um, you know, we don't have, this body isn't shorter because it's a seven inch versus a five. Um, but you don't have that big gas chamber. So you always want to, when you're wanting to know what length shock, and this goes across any manufacturer that we all measure this way. When we say it's a six inch, a seven inch, we're actually measuring the available stroke. So if the shock fully extended, how much stroke does it have? So pull it all the way out. And this is a five inch. Now, how do you know what is the correct length shock for your car? Oftentimes the manufacturer can tell you, we can tell you. Um, sometimes the manufacturers can lead you astray a little bit because they don't know um, the lengths of every shock manufacturer's uh, shocks. But most shock manufacturers can tell you. Um, if it's an odd application, maybe you have a custom built front axle or it's a, a older car and you're not really sure, uh, what we recommend customers to do is with the car sitting um, at ride height on the ground as it would go on the track, measure your eye to eye dimensions. So measure from the shock tower center line to where it's going to pick up on the axle or the rear torsion arms. Um, get that dimension. And if you give us that dimension at ride height, then we can look at our lineup of shocks, pick what model you have or what model you want to purchase, and then we can figure out the correct length. And Aside from some tuning, like left front um, gap on our wing guys and left rear gap 
for guys running a bump rubber. Um, but ideally, we like to be in the middle of the stroke. Um, so if it's a right rear and you're running a uh, nine inch shock, we would like to see four and a half inches of shock showing at ride height. So that means you have four and a half inches of compression and four and a half inches of extension. It's right in the middle. Now, if it's five inches of shaft showing and you're only traveling at two inches, we're not bottoming it out, that's okay to have a little bit more extension. But we wanna make sure that we don't run into an issue where we're either bottoming the shock out or topping the shock out um, often, okay? Um, again, there's some other scenarios that come into play like on the left front. Um, if you have a seven inch left front shock uh, on a wing sprint car, we don't necessarily want three and a half inches of shaft showing. We're gonna determine how much shaft we want showing based on track conditions as that's a tuning tool for us, um, stopping left front shock travel. Um, but like the right rear, we would wanna kinda be in the center. Um, the right front, most of the time, right in the center is about right. Um, you know, if you have a seven inch shock, three and a half inches of shaft showing, so you have three and a half compression, three and a half extension. Um, and there are some other options if you're, your shock, you need more extension, you can always go to a, a one inch extended rod end um, that'll give you some more extension. Because if, um, if you had a six inch shock and you felt like you needed to go to a five, um, you gotta remember that's a two inch shorter shock. So your body is one inch shorter and your shaft is one inch shorter. So you're two inches less extension just to get one inch more compression, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, that is um, something a lot of people don't think. Oh, I wanna go from a five to a six, it's an inch shorter shock. It's actually a two inch shorter shock because the body's shorter and the shaft is shorter. Um, so that's kind of gives you an idea how to measure your shock, how to make sure your travels are correct. Um, there's a little more that goes into it. That's kind of just glazing over the surface. Um, Non-wing, we really work with front droop to make sure that the shocks are topping out at the same point to help with forward drive and driving straight. Um, if you have questions on those certain things, you can certainly ask them. I'll, I'll answer those as best I can or um, either uh, on Monday Morning Quarterback or privately if you want to message me, I can uh, help you make sure that you're optimizing the shock lengths on your race car. Um, so let's see if we have any questions. And Michael Day, wing 305. Um, uh, what's your question with the wing 305? Sorry, I didn't see exactly when you uh, asked that. Cool, this question, uh, really high speed track racing 360 wing cars. When the car wings over, it seems like the left front always bottoms out when he comes in. Um, we have it as long as it can be. What is that dimension? Um, that will help us know if you don't have enough left front travel or if you have the right amount. Um, it's gonna be close to bottomed out or bottomed out most of the time. So that's why that's a tuning tool on a wing sprint car because like if you give it four inches at a big fast place, it'll take all four inches. But what happens is it travels down so far on the left front, it gets the right rear out of the track and creates a, a loose condition uh, entry to center. Um, so we, we tune with that a lot. So a big fast half mile um, with a 360, we're gonna wanna be about three to three and a quarter inches of down travel. Any more than that, you're gonna chance getting loose. Um, if you set it at three inches and it's bottoming out, that's okay, as long as it's not slamming down so hard that it's upsetting the race car. Uh, Michael, please ask your question so I can answer that for you. And then anybody else that has a question, uh, be, be certain to ask it. Um, if I missed your question, I always try to go back and answer after the fact. Um, and then if it's a really good question like last week's, I'll open the next uh, episode with it. So again, um, whether it's an adjustable or a non-adjustable, we have different length rod ends to optimize shock length. Um, and then depending on the model of the shock, there's some different lengths um, there. So that's, uh, there's definitely some, definitely some tuning you can do with that. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? While we're waiting for another question, um, there's been a big update to Pit Logic, and we updated the subscription platform. There was always some confusion with the three levels of subscription. Um, so now there's just one. It's either a monthly or an annual, and you get access to the whole uh, kit and caboodle um, for one low price. So it's $9.99 a month, or I believe $99.99 annual uh, for Pit Logic. And then if you want to request shock data from us, um, we're also starting to 
uh, work with some other shock builders where they can upload your data into the portal. Um, those will be separate purchases within the app if you want us to upload specific data for you. Um, but the app and all the cool features of it are now just one monthly subscription. So if you are a silver or gold member, um, you can go in there and change your subscription down to, to the bronze level and that'll work. Um, Michael, uh, shock travel on a wing 305 quarter and three eighths mile. Um, typically, again, on the left front, on a quarter mile, we're gonna be three and a half inches or so. We wanna make sure there's enough where the left front can get down and rotate into the corner. Um, your right front should be right in the middle of the range. So if you're a seven inch shock, it should be about three and a half. Left rear is gonna depend on what bump rubber you're running. And again, we like the right rear right about in the middle. So if you have a nine inch shock, you should be four, four and a half inches of shaft showing um, on, your, on your right rear. Typically on a 305, we're seven inch across the front and eight inch left rear and a nine inch right rear if you're twin tubes. If you're gas shocks, um, we're six inch on the front, eight inch right rear. Um, eight inch with a seven inch uh, body on the left rear. So, good question. All right, well, if anybody has questions after the fact, please ask them. We will definitely come back and uh, answer those uh, before next week's episode. Hope you all have a fantastic week, and we look forward to seeing you at the racetrack soon.